everyone, this is Yolanda from the Alcraft channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to do a quick uh, video showing you how you can sew backing uh, fabric, either flannel, cotton, whatever, to a piece of crochet or knitted material. Um, this is the way just that I do it. And then that way the backing, you have a, this is flannel, but you could use it in a different fabric. Um, this is kind of neat in case you have uh, open spaces and you don't want that to show. Or if you're, you're working on a graph and there's a lot of color changes and you don't want the ugly side of the work to show. This is another way of doing it. This is just a quick way. I hope you'll enjoy this tutorial. I hope you'll enjoy this tutorial. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button and let's get the party started. Okay, so first I wanted to show you this, of course, is just a small sample so that I could show you how to um, sew the pieces together. So I just made a granny square because a lot of times you'll have a pattern or a blanket that you've done and you really like it but there's a lot of holes or like if you have a lot of color changes um, maybe like a graph and you don't want the back to show and you want it to be lined. So what I did here I just made my granny square, changed some chain, um, different colors but what's important here is that I want you guys to see that I added two rows of single crochet around the edge. You might be able to get away with one row, but I have found that it's usually better to have two rows, and then that way you have something nice there to connect. Now this square, I believe it's like 12 inches square. Um, I didn't block it yet, but it is uh, the 12 inches square. And so I've taken, what you're going to be doing is you're going to get your fabric, whatever fabric you're going to use. You could use, um, this is a uh, obviously flannel and you could also use um, cotton or um, whatever fabric you're going to use in the back. Um, this it doesn't of course not a real great match but this is the fabric I had available. So what I did is that I cut the square and you would do it the same for your blanket. I cut it um, you know to, to match. I um, cut this an inch bigger than my square. I know it doesn't look like an inch but once I, once I block my but once I block the square, it will be the correct size. So here, what we're going to be doing here to prepare um, your fabric to sew onto the back of your um, piece is you could do this either by hand, um, uh, folding it over by hand, or you could fold it over and then press it with a um, your iron, press it over. I press it over a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to fold it again once again another quarter of an inch so you have half an inch on either end so then you'll be able to have you know like a total inch around so here um, like I said if you want to press it you can press it fold it over quarter of an inch and then fold it over again and now we're going to sew the edges to keep make that little hem all the way around so I'm going to go to the sewing machine and show you how I do that Okay, so I'm going to just press it a little bit. It's not totally necessary, but I just want to get out some of these creases. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of press out the wrinkles a little bit. It's not completely necessary, but there was some on here. And then if you want, if you're more comfortable, you can get your um, fabric here the edges and then along the edge you can fold it over like maybe I'm, I do it like a quarter of an inch and if you feel more comfortable you can press that over give it a little bit of steam you would do that all the way around the edges of your fabric but like I said usually I just fold it over as I'm sewing it but if you're more comfortable this way oops unfortunately here I have the I had the cord over there here trying to do it in an awkward angle so that I could film it for you so that's about a quarter of an inch and then if you want this is what I do then if you want you would just fold this once again over another quarter of an inch press it and then you will be ready to um, sew these edges over okay Usually I just fold it over as I'm working. Now you can go ahead and sew all the edges all around. Just It's already all kind of iron pressed. Just go under there. 
Just put it under your sewing machine there. And then you can just go ahead and just do a straight stitch all the way around. And you're going to repeat this on all your four edges. Okay, so I finished doing all my seaming here around my fabric piece and I know it looks a lot smaller but once I stretch it it'll fit perfectly. Now there's um, two ways to do that. When you sew on the sewing machine um, the feed dogs can get stuck on here and so you don't want that because it's going to ruin um, your crocheting or your knitted stuff. Um, there's This is like the cheaper way to do it. You can also use something called stabilizer that is water soluble. So that means that when you wet it, it just falls apart and comes it like dissolves. This is just tissue paper that I got at the dollar store. So this one, as you can see, there's 35 sheets. Let's see if I can just pull it out here. And so it's a dollar for 35 sheets, which is super cheap. I think it's super cheap. So then all I'm going to do, I, this is kind of neat because it's like the same size, but you know, obviously you're going to get the size and cut it down. I just cut out some strips like this. It doesn't even have to be um, uh, perfect or anything. So I'm just cutting them kind of wide. And you do that to go all the way around your piece. So if you're doing a blanket, you know, you don't have to do it this wide. You can just do half that wide or whatever and you're going to use this. Okay, so now to get it ready to sew, I'm going to put the top, the uh, wrong sides together, just like that. I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to pin my piece together. I'm just going to put the corner there, start pinning it. Okay, just like that. Let me get this a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see the edges there. Okay, and then I'm going to get the other corner, get it in place there. And you're going to do the same. You're going to sew each edge at one time and then you go on and work on the other edges. So once I have this here, let me go back so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, you can see that that's the edge there. I have it all. Stretch it out in the right size. Putting my pins. See how they're there, the edges? And I'll turn it over. I'll flip it over so you can see the other side. Just like that and when we take it over to the sewing machine we will put our strips underneath to keep our yarn from getting caught on the machine okay so this one I had it a little bit too far up I want to be able to see a little bit of the edge of that yarn edge this is a little bit too high up so I'm adjusting it there. Now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and then I'm going to lay down my tissue paper. So like let's pretend this was the sewing machine, okay? And before I sew it, I'm going to get my tissue paper layers, put it underneath there, and then put it under my feed dogs. This will protect my fat my knitted stuff, my knitted or crochet piece like that will be underneath. So the feed dogs will not get caught on there. So now I'm prepared the first strip, the first side, the first edge, I'm going to go sew this. Then after that I just repeat the same process, get another, cut out a new strip of paper, or tissue paper, and then work your next edges and continue doing that repeating for all four. So let me show you what I mean by that. Okay everyone, I'm working in a really tight space, so I really apologize because I know sometimes it's hard to see, but 
like a really tiny area where I kind of have to squeeze myself and everything. So here what I did, like I had shown you guys that everything was pinned, see? The edge. And so then you just get your strip of tissue paper and you put it underneath your feed dogs first. I'm going to be using a little of a zigzag stitch. So everything's ready there. My tissue paper's underneath. So, okay, I've set my settings, my tissue paper's underneath, and now I can go ahead and start doing a little bit of a zigzag stitch right there. And then go ahead and sew with that tissue paper underneath, just along the edge right there. Okay, my stitch is a little bit too, too big, so I'm going to do it a little bit longer. And I'm going to take my pins off as I go along. And I'm just going to sew it all the way to the bottom, making sure that my yarn, my edges are matching up. Okay, once I have sewn this, I could just pull off the tissue paper just like this and then the back will be sewn to the front just like that and you just repeat that for all the four sides I'm going to do that and you know once you wash that you can come off if you don't want the fabric um, any thread to show you could also use that um, invisible like it looks like fishing line so once I wash this that little the rest of those tissue um, pieces will come off. Let me see if I could. So see, nothing got caught in the teeth because we use the tissue paper. The tissue paper protects it. So I'm going to repeat that for all four sides. And then this, you can see it's already attached to the back. Okay, I also wanted to show you that there are some feet for sewing machines like this one. I hope it's not too bumpy, but you could see how wide it is right here they have these little super white and if you have one like that you can um, if you do your two rows of single crochet around the edge you really are able to just sew right with the top layer instead of having to turn it upside down and using the um, tissue paper so you might want to check this one you can't really see it because it's clear if I put my finger there or lift it up you could see how wide it is and and then that way it kind of keeps it from getting stuck you would just need to be careful with the little small edge um, so it depends on your foot also like this one will actually let me work on here and it won't get stuck so just check your foot because you might not even have to um, flip it upside down and use the tissue paper so this one when I'm sewing these type of things I put on this foot and I'm not really sure what the name of it is but it came with the sewing machine as part of the feet that come with it so if you have something uh, wide like that um, it won't get caught see how wide across it is um, and if you do it there you just have to be careful so it doesn't get caught on here but if you want to avoid any issues like some of my the rest of the feet I have are really narrow they're not that um, like both sides are like narrow like this and if it didn't have this plastic thing here, of course, this is going to get caught. But uh, with the tissue paper, that won't happen. So either way, those are the two ways that you could do it, uh, depending on the feet you have on your machine. And you can always sew it on by hand. So if you're doing it by hand, of course, and there's no issue, you could, you know, uh, work it on easier with a slip stitch all the way around or a little running stitch. Okay, so now you can see that I have sewn that lining or that backing to the granny square along the back here. Make sure you cut your backing about an inch um, around each edge uh, larger than the, the piece you're going to be attaching to for your seam allowance because of course you'll need to fold over that seam and then you're all done. But using the tissue paper is a good way to keep everything from jamming. If you use a really wide um, foot on your sewing machine you might be able to just sew it right directly on the top 
make sure you make at least two rows of single crochet. And if you have a wide enough foot, you might be able to just sew on top without it being caught. But sometimes it will catch on these open areas. So that's just one idea. Remember, you could also use that um, wash away um, stabilizer. You just wet it and then it just kind of dissolves. But of course, if you have a lot to do, that is kind of a little bit pricier. And the tissue paper for a dollar, you could get 35 sheets. And then, like I said, just cut your little strips. Use them along the end, and that's how you get it done. Anyway, I hope you find this tutorial helpful. It's just a quick tip. After you finish, you'd want to go ahead and press your edges or um, get it all nice and ready. Remember, it's best to block your blanket before you sew your square so that everything looks nice and neat. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit that like button. And thank you so much. Remember always that God loves you.